Hey guys, Julia here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm setting up my bullet journal for September somehow. This year is flying by, I swear. But I'm super excited about the theme. We're gonna be painting a lot today and using stickers and talking new habits. And this video is sponsored, which is a first. Thanks so much to Taste Crate for sponsoring this video. Taste Crate is a super unique snack subscription box and I'll be talking a little bit more about them later and cracking this box open. But for now, let's go ahead and get into the bullet journal setup for September. Hopping right in, I'm actually going to do a painting on some watercolor paper instead of directly in my journal for the cover page. I'm doing it on a separate piece of paper because although my specific journal does handle quite a bit of water and paint, I knew for this one, it was probably gonna take more water for blending than I was comfortable with using directly in the journal. So I decided better safe than sorry in this scenario. The theme this month is White Sands National Park, which is honestly just a stone's throw away from where I live in New Mexico. Photos of this national park pop up pretty often on Pinterest and on Reddit, so you may have seen it, but honestly, it's such a unique destination here in the US. It's actually the largest dune field of gypsum sand in the world, and it covers about 275 square miles. But as you probably can imagine, the sunsets in the park are just magical. Honestly, it's just chef's kiss. And sometimes it feels like you're on a totally different planet when you get far enough out there. It's crazy. But getting to this painting, I'm using my Hemi gouache set and I've been absolutely loving working with gouache when I can lately. I'm still figuring it out, but for the sky, I've mixed up a range of light pinks and purples and blues and laid down sort of like strips of color. I want it to be in the sky. And then to blend them together a bit, I just used a clean brush with a tiny bit of clean water to sort of smooth out where there were any like harsh transitions. You'll see that technique throughout the setup, but just know that I do have two containers for water here one for cleaning dirty brushes, and then one just for blending and adding to the pigment to get a more transparent consistency. For the dunes, I'm just blocking in areas that aren't in shadow with a few different shades of the lightest purplish color I can conjure. The sands are actually pretty white out there as a base, but it does tend to soak up and take on whatever colors are in the sky. And then for the shadow, I'm using a super dark midnight blue and just blocking that in. This dark of a shadow was definitely questionable to me as I was doing this, but I was using a reference photo of White Sands and I've learned in the past to just paint what you see no matter how just wrong it may seem. So I went with that mindset and I'm glad I did because I feel like this dark blue really brought the drama and the heavy contrast which felt right for the location. So I'm still pretty new at explaining what I'm doing here, but in the most basic way I know how to explain this, I'm adding in lighter shadows to the dune based off the reference photo. I'm not using much water when initially laying the color down, but then I'm blending the colors a bit using that clean brush and a bit of water. Sometimes I'm going on top of already blended areas with more water just to give it a softer look. I personally like the look of paint strokes, so I'm leaving a bit of that human touch there. Just remember with gouache, using water does reactivate dry paint, so you have to be strategic on where and how much water you use to blend.
So the funny thing about gouache is that the light colors dry darker and the dark colors dry lighter. So I decided to hop back into those deepest shadows with an even darker blue, almost black, to really get the darkest shadow to just serve up all the major contrast vibes like I just needed it to be like just dark, dark. <laughs> Also was going for some clouds in the sky some like wispy kind of dry clouds but it just ended up not working so another pro with gouache is you just let it dry and then just paint over it and it's like it never happened we're just gonna fix that right up and just leave the sky at this lovely gradient all the way down And then for the bit of planty brush there, I'm using a liner brush to get the super small strokes and fine detail there. So once this is all dry, I'm getting rid of that washi tape border and scanning it into my computer to add the September header and printing that out on paper that will be a little flatter when it goes into my journal. The font that I use for September is called Moon and I just love the simplicity and subtle roundness of this font. I'll leave that below along with supplies if you guys want to check that out. But on the left side of the spread, I'm taping off a little rectangular shape and painting in the colors I use for the sky. I'm then going to use a clean brush and a bit of water to blend this out so it looks like a little piece of the sky is here on the other page. I got a little bit of paint down below the rectangle there, boo, but I'm going to let that dry and come back a bit later to patch that all up. Since there's a lot going on with the painting, I'm keeping the quote page very simple here, using a Cricut fine liner to write out like soft drifting sands to just set like this dreamlike mood for the theme. I ended up patching up the little drip with a bit of white wash, just dabbing it on with zero water so that the blue underneath didn't reactivate. But that's pretty much it for the cover spread and I love it. Of course, it took a lot of time to execute, but it was just so fun for me and I love incorporating art into my bullet journal. Okay, since that cover page was a lot, I'm calling in some reinforcements for the monthly calendar spread. First things first, I'm cutting a little Dutch door into the spread, similar to last month for a little peekaboo moment, but I'm using my brand new functional sticker set to set up the calendar. The Patreon tiers recently got updated and these functional stickers are a part of the kit every month for the super tip tier. There are also printables of these functional elements starting at the $5 fine liner tier. But anyway, I'm getting a pretty minimal calendar set up here, just using the horizontal lines to break up each week. And I did print out another copy of the painting without the header. And I just cut it up right down the middle more or less for a little sidebar there to tie this in more with the cover page. I'm using stickers from this month's decorative sheet down on the bottom there and I just love these so much. And then up top I'm drawing in just a big old 09 for the ninth month of the year and I'm using an Archer and Olive acrylograph for this in the color Midnight Moonlight which is in their fall collection but you can also grab these individually now if you happen to be vibing with this color in particular and of course gotta add in my highlight in there because I'm a sucker for a highlight guilty as charged. <laughs> So in that little peekaboo panel, you can see I'm getting those same sky colors striped out and blended out with a clean brush. 
also throwing in a dune and a little bit of a mountain silhouette back there because we're actually in what's called the Tularosa Basin. So there are several mountain ranges that surround us on all sides. But the star of this little painting is the yucca plant. It's actually the state flower in New Mexico. But yeah, you can see them literally everywhere here, including white sand. So I had to include them somewhere in this thing. And to paint this yucca plant, I just started off with sort of a mid-tone green for the leaves and just built on top of that with lighter and darker hues of green just to give it some sort of dimension. But I wasn't being too picky with this. I didn't want to spend like a huge amount of time on realism or anything like that, but I think I got it to a pretty nice state there. After pulling up the tape, I decided to give it a solid border with the acrylograph pen before adding in just a few more accents from that Patreon decorative sticker sheet. And that's going to do it for the monthly spread after I get those few stickers in there. Flipping that Dutch door open, I'm working on my little tracking dashboard spread. This first page on the left here is my night log. I feel like I'm constantly singing the praises of this tracker, but I do love it. And as always, super quick and easy to set up. Just two columns numbered down to 30. But here I just track my meals, movies, and then also noting any favorites along the way. I also mark any time we order out just to keep an eye on that as well. So a lot of functionality here for a super easy setup. Over on the opposite side will be a few more trackers. I'm habit tracking here along with my super simple social media growth tracker and yearly focus check-in chart. But for these mini calendars, I'm drawing them in again this month with that Archon Olive Grid Ruler because it just does such a great job. It makes the process a lot quicker, just lining everything up once and not having to slide the ruler around too much and then realign everything for every single line. But different habits this month, I'm actually trying to slowly transition into a vegan lifestyle. So the first order of business is trying out being a pescatarian. So I'm shooting for going meatless. And so I'll be tracking the days I managed to do that. I started in August and it's been going really well so far. If you are vegetarian or have any favorite vegan recipes or things I should try, please leave them down in the comments. But I have noticed that snacking has has become like a whole new beast. Like it's pretty insane and I wanna keep the snacking healthy. And just as if someone was reading my mind, Taste Crate reached out with this amazing solution to my snacking dilemma. Taste Crate is a snack subscription box that is dedicated to sending you premium and hard to find snacks and beverages every month. Taste Crate is super cool because the items in the box are curated by a team of food lovers and foodies, and they make sure that these snacks aren't only unique, but that they taste good. Each month you can expect about 15 to 20 different products. And I'm just gonna say as I'm going through that the packaging design of the box and the products inside are on 
point. I'm a sucker for not only good food, but good design. You guys know this. And I was just impressed that I never heard of any of this stuff and I was intrigued by it all. But I'm snacking on some of this while I'm editing and the woe dough brownie batter bar is where it's at. Trust me, it's giving me the sweetness without a ton of calories. Also, this Haywell sparkling water in here is super good. And I usually don't really vibe with sparkling water, but this is good. It actually has some flavor and it's also packed with wellness benefits for energy and immunity. So win-win there. So if you're into healthy snacks, unique snacks, or if you just love to try new munchies like me, check out the link in the description and get 10% off your Taste Crate box. And thanks again so much to Taste Crate for the new snacks and for sponsoring this video. Back to this tracker page to finish it up. I'm adding in a little social media growth check-in chart for YouTube and Instagram. And then down at the bottom is a focus check-in tracker to touch base with my four focus areas for the year. And then once I have those in there, that's going to do it for this tracking dashboard craziness spread. <laughs> The last spread for this setup, of course, is the first weekly spread. The first weekly this time around includes five days and I'm loving the Dutch door vibes in this larger notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and chop that right page. I'm going for another landscape painting up top here. And I initially was planning to do this with Tombows or maybe just an outline drawing with fine liners. And you totally could do that if you're recreating this theme. But I was just having so much fun with the gouache and it wasn't as nervous nerve wracking as I thought it was going to be. So I decided to just go for it. And I actually kept everything pretty simple with this painting and didn't go into too much detail with this, but it still gave me all the vibes that I was going for with this theme and matched up pretty well. On the left side, I'm setting up my rolling task list using the functional sticker header and over on the right, I'm splitting up that Dutch door to fit in any meetings and events and leaving space for quick and easy notes down at the bottom. I've also added in a few more stickers and that's going to be my weekly spread all done. Super quick, super easy. Gotta love it. You guys have seen a lot of the Patreon goodies in this setup, but there's even more new stuff going on with the kit this month. There are printables, color ready spreads to customize, blank calendars, and of course, two new sticker sheets, which I am just over the moon about. If you want to get your hands on these and support the channel, I'd love for you to consider joining the collection over on Patreon where tiers start at $2 a month. 
but let's take one more look at the complete setup for September. I'm really pleased about how these spreads turned out this month. Be sure to give this video a like if you've enjoyed, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and please tag me in any recreations. The ones I've seen so far have just been mind blowing, honestly. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. And if you like this video, here are a couple more I think you would enjoy.